Hagia tree. The Greeks were very, very proud that they lived in cities or polis, as they called them. It's where our word metropolis comes from, meaning big city. The Greeks were proud that they lived in cities because they thought that made them cultured, that made them better people, and it showed that they were cleverer than people who lived in small villages. When people banded together into a city, they were able to look after each other, protect each other, to share things, including the work, which meant that some people could become really good at certain jobs. For example, if there are enough people making food, and instead of everyone having to farm every day, some people could become blacksmiths and make weapons, or they could become teachers and teach new things, or they could become traders and sail around the country trading goods, or they could become top sports people and compete in all the sports competitions like the Olympics to become famous. Most ancient Greeks lived in small houses with walls all the way around, a main building, two wings coming out, and then a wall to seal it off and make a private interior courtyard. This courtyard could have a garden in it. There are very few windows at ground level to make it safe as well as private, and protect against bandits and robbers. There wasn't much wood in Greece and lots of wood had to be used to build boats. And so it was very valuable. That meant, that if you moved house, you would probably take your wooden front door with you. I'm glad we don't still do that today. Let's have a look at a Greek city. Here we have a Greek city. The first thing the Greeks would build when they were making their cities was an Acropolis. This is a raised hill in the middle of the city, which people could go to for safety in case an enemy came into the city. It also would have held the main temple to the god who that city was dedicated to. Around the city would be lots of farms. When Greeks were founding, which means setting up a new city, they would mark out rectangles of land and everybody would get a rectangle. These farms were very important, but you had to make sure that enemies didn't come and steal from them. Another important part of a Greek city was the agora or marketplace. This is where people could trade things as well as talk to each other and swap ideas. Since Greece is only half the size of the UK and it was split into so many tiny parts, each city-state would have had to have trade and swap things with their neighbours. If you made really good grapes, your neighbours made really good horses, then you might want to swap so that they could make wine and you could have cavalry. The port is where all the boats would dock. It's where a lot of the goods came into the city and went out of the city for that trading to happen in the market. It was also important because it allowed the city to have fishermen. This meant that even poor people could have some meat sometimes. Greek cities were normally protected by city walls, which went all the way around, which encircled the city. Sometimes these walls would extend out around the port as well, like in the city of Athens, which had a very long corridor joining up the port and the city. Outside of these walls would be a cemetery where people were buried. In Greece, people wanted to be remembered after they died, and so they had tombs built next to the roads leading into the city. Nobody was allowed to be buried inside the city in order to keep it clean and hygienic. Inside and outside of the city walls would be temples to various gods. Each city would have one main temple on their Acropolis to the god who that city was dedicated to. But they would also have lots of other temples to the different gods who the Greeks believed were in charge of different areas of life. For example, by the port, there might be a temple to the god Poseidon, who was god of the sea, where sailors and fishermen could go and make sacrifices to try and prevent storms from happening. Greek cities would also have a gymnasium or a gym. A bit like the Westgate Centre, but without the swimming pool part, this would be where people could go to exercise, to lift weights, and to play sports with each other. The Greeks believed that it was very important for Greek men to be fit and strong. Greek cities would also usually have a theatre. Travelling actors would put on plays here, and it wouldn't just be entertaining, but it would help to spread ideas around the country. 
in Athens, they thought that plays were so important at the theatre that they let prisoners out of prison every year to go and watch them. They also let rich Athenians pay for the plays as part of their taxes. And they would also have competitions for writing plays where you could win a lot of money. How many parts of a Greek city can you see in this Lego model? When a city got too big because too many people were living there, some of the citizens would be sent off in a boat to go and start a new city or found a new city as it's also called. They would probably choose a place by the sea. These new cities were called colonies and they would grow until they became cities themselves. And then maybe they would have to send a boatload of people somewhere else to start all over again. Sometimes these citizen settlers would take a flaming torch from their original city. And when they set up their new city, they would light a fire there to show that they were still connected to their original hometown. One very famous idea to come out of Greece is the idea of democracy, where you vote for things. In our country, we have a democracy where we vote for who's in charge every four years. In Athens, they voted a lot more than that. Every 10 days, in fact, because like the Romans, the Greeks used a 10 day week. The Athenians would vote on all sorts of things, on who to trade with, whether to go to war, if they should build a new gym or a new theater. They even voted if they should throw somebody out of the city. In English, this is called being ostracized. If 3000 people in your city decided that you were dangerous and you shouldn't be a part of the city anymore, then you were exiled and you had to go and live somewhere else for 10 years. After that, you could come back. Here's an example of a slip used to vote for somebody to be thrown out of a city. It's not written on a piece of paper, like we might record votes today, it's scratched into an old piece of smashed up pot, a first name and a father's name or surname. In Greece, people wanted to be remembered. If people were rich enough or famous enough or had done something heroic enough, then they would have a statue built of them on the Acropolis of their city. These statues were full life size and they were painted to look quite realistic. I hope that's given you a rough flavor of Greece. Keep checking our class page because at the start of every week there'll be new things there for you to look at and to work on. Keep up the good work. Remember to be kind to each other year three.